The following is a Fork TV production made in cooperation with Jack Carpenter. Ladies and gentlemen, the man of that, Mr. Holster in the sex show! <laughs> Hey, it's Mr. Holster. I'm here. What do we got tonight, guys? We've got High West Whiskey Double Rye. Ooh. Mmm. Take, take a little sniff. A little snifter there. Smell good? Uh, oh, I'm sorry. The cork? Yeah. It's got an actual cork. A real cork. Smell that, baby. Oh, yeah. Now that's good stuff, huh? Oh, mmm. Yes. Put a little in my cup here. Work that baby up. To the sunny slopes of long ago. Oh, yeah. Much better than last week. Much, much better than last week. And that helps. Kind of cools me down and heats me up all at the same time. So, a little awkward tonight. I am I got a new computer. And I'm using the computer to do this. Because I'm going to try the computer out for the first time. Tonight, right now. I am trying it out as we speak for the first time. So, let us hope this works. I'm hoping it works. And when it's done, we'll see. Yeah. So, let's look at our agenda tonight. While my mind is still clear. <laughs> Last week we had this. This beautiful Glock coffee mug that if you are the winner... Yeah, i got to get used to the where are the cameras. If you are the winner... You can drink your coffee while watching my coffee show on Wednesday morning. Well, probably not this Wednesday morning, because by the time you tell me where to send it, and I send it, but the following Wednesday, I bet you got it. I hope. We shall see. So, I took the liberty of putting all the names of everyone who came up with a sentence using Clint Eastwood's name in last week. Remember that? Yes. Everybody who came up with a sentence is in my hat. My, which, which hat is this? Sloppy Joe's Key West hat. Yes, in my Sloppy Joe's Key West hat. My dad used to live down in uh, Cujo Key, near Summerlin, Summerlin Key. It's actually Cujo Key, but mailing address was Summerlin Key. All right, which I'm sure thrills you to death to have that bit of information. Let us draw this. Make sure I only have one, because I've, I've got a history of doing this and pulling out more than one at once. Here it is. This is the winner. Let me put the hat to the side. Nice and neat. I don't want to make a mess. All right, here we go, guys. You ready? You ready? A drum roll. Of course, I don't have a, I don't have one. You know, you could just tap your fingers on your computer screen. Maybe down. If you got a laptop, you could do it on the bottom part of the laptop here. Or if you got a keyboard, a keyboard, do it on the key. That helps. Do it on your keyboard. Ready? Drum roll, and the winner is. Oh, it's Chico, 1953 Gonzalez. Hey, maybe we'll find out how he picked that name, Chico, 1953 Gonzalez. Because I had this discussion before, uh, when I read his name, Chico 1953 Gonzalez, it always makes me think of that Groucho Marx, You Bet Your Life episode, where he has the fellow on there. You know, though those people were, were paid actors, I think. But the fellow on there, and his name was Gonzalez. He asked him, what's his name? He says, Gonzalez. So what's your, what's your, he goes, is that your first name or your, is that your first name or your last name? And he says, uh-huh. And he goes, no, is, is Gonzalez your, what's your whole name? He says, Gonzalez, what's your last name? Gonzalez. 
So your full name's Gonzalez, Gonzalez? And he shakes his head, no. He says, well, what is your full name? He says, Gonzalez, Gonzalez, Gonzalez. So it makes me think of that every time. It's because Chico, the first Chico, 1953 Gonzalez, Chico, Chico Marx. And then the other Marx with the Gonzalez, Gonzalez, Gonzalez. And I think of the Marx Brothers every time I see his name. So there, you, Chico, 1953 Gonzalez, you are the winner. PM me your address and we'll get the United States Postal Service to, to get this down to you or over to you or up to you or wherever you may be because I don't, I don't know where you are. So there you go. There's the winner of, of last week's contest, which starts us into this week's contest. And this week's contest is along the same lines. Once again, we have a Glock a Glock item that we're giving away. And in this case, it's four, four, there's the camera. It's four tumblers. Yes, we have Glock Perfection four tumblers. So you can, you can use this to have yourself an adult libation during the sock show. You see where this is going now? If you win, you can have yourself and three of your friends because there's four tumblers here. Three of your friends over and you can watch the sock show and have a, have a, a ride. Yeah, or a beer, whatever you want, whatever your preference is. I'm not picky. You shouldn't be either. Okay, so what I want you to do here, I'm going to give you a little, I'm not used to this camera. This is very odd. I'm going to I'm gonna give you a uh, uh, something. All you got to do is down below, type in to participate in this. And if you type down below the answer to this question, down below, if you type in the answer to this question down below, this one's not going to be as easy as last week. I'm just warning you. Type in the answer to the question, and of course, if you're if you follow me, it's up here. If you follow me on my uh, Facebook page, I know a lot of people don't do Facebook, but if you follow me on my Facebook page, you will know the answer to this question right away. But if you're a fan of movies, you'll know the answer to this question. Anyway. This because this person is not only a movie star, but they were in a TV series, and most gun guys know this guy because he had a mare's leg in the TV series. So you'll probably get it anyways. But the other day, which I think was uh, I think it was on Thursday. I think Thursday was the day. Thursday. Thursday was his birthday, and he is pictured on my Facebook page, Mr. Holster. So if you're on Facebook, just go to Mr. Holster. And, uh, and I'll, I'll, I'll put a link to it down below here, too, so you can go to my Facebook page. There you go. You could still check it out and type it in. Any rate, I posted it. It was his birthday and a picture of him in his Jaguar and a horse. Yeah. Because you can't go anywhere in your Jaguar without taking backup transportation in the form of a horse. This is true. That's why he was the king of cool. So tell me who the king of cool was. And just need his last name. We all know who he is. You just say that name and everybody knows, ooh, the king of cool. So tell me his name. Type his name in down below and you're in the contest. Type his name in down below and you're in the contest. There. Just that simple. Okay, guys? And you, you could win your set of uh, glassware. Well, actually, it's not glass, but a tumbler. You can win a tumbler, set of four tumblers to have your evening libation in when you watch the sock show next time. So, got that cleared up. And if, you, if, if you're not clear on it, then you can just start this over and watch it again. I don't have to keep talking about it. We'll move on to the next item. The next item is, this is interesting. Let me just stop for a second. I got to take a quick, just a quickie. Oh, good stuff. Ah. Now let's clear this up right away. The top five. I'm going to tell you what the top five selling handguns were, sidearms, for 2015. Starting with number five. We're going to start with number five. And number five is a Glock. Yes, a Glock 17. The full-size 9mm Glock. Number four, 
Number four is the XDS. Yes, if you've got an XDS, then you pick number four out of the top picks. Number three, the number three gun, largest selling gun in 2015 was a Glock 26. Yes, a Glock 26. Number two, the number two, the second best selling sidearm handgun in 2015 was the Smith & Wesson Shield. Smith & Wesson Shield. And the number one, I bet you can guess it, yes, the number one top selling handgun for 2015 was the Glock 19. There you go, guys, the Glock 19. That was the top selling, top selling handgun for 2015. Just a little bit of trivia there I thought I'd throw out to you. And you find anything interesting about that? Well, you know what I find interesting about it is every one of these guns basically is a, more or less a Glock. Plastic frame, which Glock was the originator of, striker fired handgun. And and the fact that number five was a 17, they're not all necessarily super small concealed carry guns either. Glock 19 is kind of middle of the road. Of course, shield is small and 26 is small. And the XDS is small. But then you got the Glock 17 on the other end of it. So, and you know what? I've kind of been interested in XDS with the four inch barrel. Have you seen that one? That kind of interests me. Because I like the longer barrel, and this is why. You're thinking, why did you like the longer barrel? Well, you got a longer sight radius, and it goes better inside your pants. Because, you know, I like having that length. It's They seem to, you get a four-inch barrel or somewhere near there, and it just stays in the holster better inside your pants, I feel. I think it stays in the holster better, period. And it doesn't make any difference if the barrel's longer. It's still just as concealable, right? It's the grip frame that uh, sticks out the grip, the butt of the grip. So a longer barrel like that in that XDS, I, I've looked at them and thought, wow, that's I kind of like that. I wish the grip frame on it were just a tad larger because, you know, I, I, I like a little bit more to grab onto. But still, I'm interested and enough to be thinking about it. But this has been going on for quite a bit, and what happens is, you know, I go in there and look at it again, and I end up, something new's there, and I end up buying that instead. So, I'm interested, but not, apparently not interested enough, but now I know that, that that was the number four, the XDS. Springfield XDS was number four on the list, and uh, makes me think. Out of that, that's the only one I do not, so, I do not own that. Excuse me. At any rate, I thought I'd show you a gun today because it's a gun channel, right? So I got this gun out of the safe, and it's a good thing I did. It really needed to be cleaned up because all the all the oil on it had, had pretty much varnished out. So not that it really matters because it doesn't matter at all. It's in really, really bad shape. It was nickel plated once upon a time, many, many moons ago. And would not even shoot this gun because I don't think it would handle it well. And here you go, guys. We'll let you see it. It's a Smith & Wesson. There. A Smith & Wesson brake top. Very, very old brake top that was my great-grandmother's. And gr Dad used to say back when they lived on the ranch, she had this on her 24-7. Carried it all the time. All the time, and it has seen indeed better days. It's uh, yeah, it's seen better. It's, it still operates though. It of course is a well, not of course because I made it in 32 too. But this is a 38 Smith and Wesson, 38 Smith and Wesson brake top, and just just in no nickel left on it. It just and it's kind of scratched up here and there too. I don't know what she was doing to it, but. It's a little rough. It's a little rough, you know, but that was, uh, 
you know, this thing was made before 1900, probably. I haven't checked out the serial number and when it was made. I just... So that's kind of an artifact for around here. I thought I'd dig it out and show it to you. There it is. The breakdown. So that's the show, guys. So you figure out who the king of cool is, and you put his name right down there, and uh, maybe you'll win. Till next time, thanks for liking, thanks for subscribing, thanks for sharing, and go out and stay safe.